Hey guys, welcome to the Fireball Mullet channel. Today we're going to go over the supercharger coolant reservoir mounting. Uh, I got a pretty cool way of how I did that. And also I'm going to go over some other cooling prep items such as the heater hoses, uh, I did the thermostat and a couple other prep items. So I kind of wanted to walk you through what I've been working on. On We're getting closer guys, so let's get right to it. So the first area that I worked on was the heater hoses. I went ahead and bought some 90 degree hoses that would essentially let me clear the back of the blower. All right, so let me take you in here and show you these heater hoses. Um, so here they go. Um, now you can see, now I've got a 90 degree um, because my understanding is you know, the, the lid and the supercharger base is gonna be right here. So it's nice to kind of get that 90 degree in there and get it away from the back of the engine. So uh, it's nice to kind of get that already done and I'm not gonna worry about it. So previously, uh, my main concern was keeping the hoses off the firewall and kind of keeping the whole firewall clean. Now I'm kind of going for, I want everything kind of off the engine. And so I rerouted them away from the engine. Uh, and I also went ahead and bought some braided nylon covering uh, that you would use like for wiring loom and hoses and that sort of thing. So I wanted to clean up the hoses. Uh, I figured since there'll be so many hoses with you know the heater hoses, the AC lines, and now two more three quarter inch hoses for the supercharger blower uh, intercooler that's going to be running through you know there's no you know you can only get rid of the hoses but so much so i thought hey let's just try to accentuate it and uh make them look better uh than than trying to just you know put them aside anyway, we'll see how this goes if i'm happy with it as normal you know i typically do something i kind of have a vision in my head of how it's going to go and if it doesn't work that way then i just change it up as you well know. The other thing with the heater uh, hoses, I kept the, I have an electronic bypass. It's a four way on the LS engines. Uh, you've seen it in my other videos where it's a four way bypass electronic and it has a knob where you can kind of dial in how open it is. But I basically leave it closed in Florida 11 months out of the year. So uh, it's always bypassed. In fact, I almost thought about just not even running uh, hoses to the core and just running the little loop heater hose. Um, to me, it's the, uh, it's probably function over looks, which I feel like that function is, is important to me. If I've got a heater, I wanna be able to use it and that's just, you know, simple. Uh, but so that system is gonna stay as well. Uh, you can see the valve. Now this is electronic valve uh, that opens and closes and lets fluid bypass it. Um, and I went ahead and routed that. And to really clean up those hoses, I got some hoses separators. I believe they're by Earl's. I got them off of Jags or Summit. I think they were on Jags. Uh, and they are one, a little bit over one inch uh, inside diameter. And that allows me to really separate and clean up the hoses. Again, just trying to clean up the hoses as much as I can. And if I'm gonna have hoses out here all over the engine, I'm gonna tr just try to make them you know, look nice as I can. Now, one thing I did think about was running the hoses through the fender, and I still may do that for the LSA blower, but at some point it's just too many hoses running through the fender there. So I decided to keep the heater hoses like this. I may do the LSA blower brick hoses uh, coming through the fender and then working itself to the pump in the reservoir. I don't know yet, we'll see. I don't, honestly, it just doesn't matter to me. I like to keep, that's what an engine bay is for. <laughs> you know, to keep your hoses and all that stuff contained inside uh, to support the engine system. So, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, so, but that is an option. The next area that we'll cover is the thermostat. I went ahead and put a 160 thermostat in that. 
That way uh, I could drop the, the engine coolant temperature overall. I think the LSA blower is gonna be raising the temps on it. So everything that I've seen, it's a pretty typical performance mod. I know there's some debate out there about keeping the engine temp up, but I think it's still gonna be around 185, which should be perfect for this build. So, and I definitely saw a big improvement on that. Uh, so the other thing is I wanted to do the thermostat, get everything done and kind of baseline where the coolant is and make sure everything is just nice and right before we do the blower. So yeah, I could just throw this thing on and be done with it in a week, but I really like to take my time methodically sort of think through these systems. I'm in no rush. I'm enjoying the hell out of the car as it is now. So I'm definitely in no rush. <clears throat> for this although you know I say that but you know it's almost consuming uh, thinking about the different systems and how I want to do it so we're getting there my goal is uh, finish this up through November the heat exchanging system but the next thing I'll need is the pump and the wiring harness for that yes, so this is what it's gonna look like let me give you a quick sort of overview uh, it's the Canton Supercharger Reservoir 80-242. And then I've got a lid for that, a Mustang lid. Then it's mounted on a fourth gen battery tray where I cut the reservoir off the bottom of it and just use the tray. Then I cut out in order to have clearance so I can get to my radiator overfill expansion tank. And then I'm gonna utilize, that's gonna line up with the, um, that's essentially gonna line up with the original hole that's threaded. I'm gonna get a threaded rod with a wing nut. And this is already mounted to the tray. I just gotta get that threaded rod and a wing nut and this thing is done. So that's kind of the overview of it. It uh, turned out super nice. So let's go ahead and walk through what it took to kind of get this thing in there. All right, let's talk a little bit about the cooling reservoir uh, for the supercharger. So, man, I've been debating in my head, this actually just came in. So I've been ordering parts here and there. This one just came in and I thought I was gonna mount it off the fender well near the AC compressor and just kind of cover up some of the looms and the wires that are running to the relay center. And I actually, I went through a whole process. I cut out a cardboard template for that uh, and was, you know, kind of prepping that to fab up the metal bracket. Um, and then I was thinking, man, I really want to utilize this battery space here, uh, what was left over. So I really wanted to take advantage of this area from the battery relocation project. So I went ahead and mounted my relay center there and it just fits so nice right there. So that's kind of the electronics. Then I took a three in, a little bit over a three inch hole saw and I uh, basically put a hole in the, in the battery tray and I fed up the reservoir, the coolant, the radiator coolant uh, that used to be right here. But since I mounted the heat exchanger, I'm no longer able to run it up here because it just won't fit. So now I've got a hole uh, <laughs> in this cover and I'll have to get another cover here. Then the, so I mounted that through the original battery tray and I cut a hole through the original battery tray, mounted that up through it. And that way I can uh, utilize that space. And if you look under the car, it's actually, most of it is under the battery tray there. So only about, maybe three or four inches of it sticks up through the battery tray. And that way I can kind of check it, check my fluid and that sort of thing. So now I can go in, check my fluid and I'm all set. So kind of cool, you know, the way it sort of worked. Um, and this is right in front of the headlights here. Um, you can see my ground junction block and all that good stuff. So getting back to the supercharger coolant reservoir, uh, I ended up looking at, uh, I had a fourth gen coolant reservoir that includes a battery tray. So I'll put a picture of what that looks like here. And what I had an idea about is just removing the coolant jug part 
and just using the battery tray and then setting that on top of the relay center but having that where it's actually easily removable in case I need to check a fuse or something like that. Uh, but the problem was that it covered my new radiator coolant reservoir that I just recessed through the battery tray. So that one was uh, one that I couldn't really get to uh, because if, if I mounted it over top of it, I wouldn't be able to get to the lid on it. So I cut out, I took that same hole saw that I used to drill through the battery tray and I drilled through the fourth gen plastic tray and basically gave me a area where I could still open that reservoir. And the supercharger coolant reservoir had plenty of room to mount to the right of that. So it's pretty cool. Now to make it removable, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to figure out how to use that same battery hold down bolt uh, for this fourth gen tray. And so, because as you know, it's threaded through that battery tray. So one of the things that I wanna get is, and this is something I still need to do today, is I need to go ahead and figure out, I think I wanna do a threaded rod with that same pitch, make it longer and have a wing nut where I could, again, easily remove it from that. So that's the plan for that one. Uh, so I know it's kind of a crazy design here. Sometimes you just kind of get into it and I had no idea what I was going to do with this, but sometimes you just get a crazy idea and you just got to go with it, see it through. And, uh, who knows, you know, maybe there may be a video or so after this where I totally redo this, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's possible. So, uh, because I'm definitely going down a road here that, that I haven't done before and I haven't really seen this done. Um, so it's just so much space there that I really wanted to leverage that. So this was my idea, just kind of stacking on top of the relay. It's dead, it's dead space anyway, right on top of it, cause it's only three inches deep. Uh, so go ahead and put it on top of it. So that was some of the things that I was thinking about with this. And you know what, after I got it mocked up and I put it on there, man, I just love it. Now let's talk about the coolant reservoir itself. So this coolant reservoir is a 80-242 Canton reservoir. Now it doesn't come with the half inch NPT by three quarter inch bar fittings. That's on order. It should be actually here today. Um, and it doesn't come with a cap. And by the way, uh, that nice aluminum cap that they sell with it is about $65. This is about 132, maybe 145 with shipping. And so then you gotta buy, you know, the fittings. I ended up paying about 25 bucks for them, uh, for a pair of them. And then I also had to order the cap. Now I didn't get that high dollar cap. I ended up finding out that the Ford Mustang cap, and I'll give you a picture here in the part number, It's like 13 bucks and it works perfect. So maybe down the road, I mean that cap, that $65 cap really does look nice, but you know, it's threaded, right? Uh, you can see that. So <laughs> 13 bucks, let's do the $13 one for now. The other thing that I was concerned about since I'm stacking things and that fourth gen battery tray, I mean, the plate is really thick, right? The battery tray itself. Uh, I was concerned that it was too high and it wasn't, the, wasn't gonna clear the hood. But after I mounted it and got it all set, I realized that the radiator cap actually sat higher than that slightly. And I did a few tests of the hood and man, it just worked perfect. You can see here that, you know, probably not from your angle, but you know, it's at least maybe a half an inch higher than this. So man, that just worked, that just sealed the deal for me. Uh, and so I feel like that's a really good fit for it. So again, guys, that's kind of the setup for today. Uh, pretty, pretty excited about how this thing turned out. 
Hey guys, well, on uh, I plan on the next video is gonna be doing the pump and uh, wiring that up. And that's basically gonna complete our whole heat exchanger uh, system. So I'm pretty excited about getting that whole system contained, done, and the car still running. I'm driving it uh, like I literally drove it two hours yesterday while I'm doing this supercharger uh, LSA blower conversion. Well, that's today's video, guys. As always, you know the drill. Like and subscribe and let the, uh, the masters of the internet universe know that, uh, that we're sharing this third gen content. So uh, as always, thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video.